what are we all blessed with? What are our gifts? And even if you think you have a gift for something, but you're not quite sure, you should check it out because maybe you do. And that's something worthwhile and worthy and might be affecting and touching somebody else. So go for it. Welcome to the Jesus Calling Podcast. Today's guests have learned that God created us all for a purpose and put greatness inside each of us. Actor producer Rita Wilson and Pastor Lisa Osteen Comas. First up, we talk with actor producer and singer songwriter Rita Wilson. Rita has a long list of credits to her name, including many roles in television and film, and as the producer of such blockbuster films as My Big Fat Greek Wedding and Mamma Mia. Rita also shines as a singer-songwriter and has just released her fourth album called Halfway to Home. Rita tells us about growing up as a small-town kid in the bright lights of Hollywood and how it's never too late to chase a dream. I'm Rita Wilson. I am a singer, a songwriter, an actor, and a producer. I was born and raised in Hollywood, California, and um, my parents, my dad was Bulgarian and my mom was Greek, and they met in New York and um, moved to California after they got married. I'm a first-generation American. And growing up in Hollywood, it was just like my little hometown, but I grew up with really solid family values because my parents were just extraordinary people. And so um, my dad converted to Greek Orthodoxy, and um, then Tom, who was baptized Catholic, converted to Greek Orthodoxy, uh, and both my kids are Greek Orthodox. For us, it was really kind of great um, going to church on Sundays. Um, Easter is a huge holiday for us, um, Christmas as well, but Easter is really the big, big holiday in um, Greek Orthodoxy. But yes, I'm a firm believer in rituals and traditions, and uh, we did all of that growing up. And I really have to thank my mom, but I also have to thank my dad for for uh, doing it too, because, you know, a lot of times you see the moms going and the dads are kind of like, yeah, I'll catch up with you next week. But my dad would come and uh, feel very blessed by that. And he was very much embraced by the Greek community, had a bunch of friends at church and golfing buddies. <laughs> And even though I grew up in this big town that is iconic and people come from all over the world to sort of visit, I just grew up like a normal kid. We rode our bikes and we climbed the hills and went to the movies, And except the movie theaters were on Hollywood Boulevard, or you would get ice cream and that was on Hollywood Boulevard. But my parents instilled in us really great family values. And my parents were married 59 years, and I think... Um, you can grow up in a big city, and it doesn't mean that you have to abandon who you are as a person and who you, how, who you are by the nature of how you were raised. So I really have my parents to thank for that. And music was always playing in the background, whether it was in the car or on the radio at home, but it was AM radio, so it was just one station. But that one station played everything. It played country, it played pop, it played soul, R&B, rock, everything. So that's how I was exposed to all this great country music and, and all sorts of genres. And my mom was very funny because we'd be driving in the car and she would hear a song on the radio and in her Greek accent she would say, that song going to be a hit. And she was always right. So in some weird way, I think I started listening to music in a way, a way and identifying like, why did my mom say that was going to be a hit? And it was. What did that song have in it that other songs didn't have? So um, that was kind of cool, this like Greek lady saying, that song going to be a hit. <laughs> I didn't know I wanted to become an actress. I was discovered my first day of high school when I was 14 years old, and that led to a modeling job for Harper's Bazaar, and then that modeling job led to an agency, and then I got my Screen Actors Guild card by doing a part on The Brady Bunch, and that led to acting. And I felt very thankful because it was just a great job, and I kept working, but I didn't have the idea that I could be an actor until it almost was telling me like, you are working so much that I think this is your job. <laughs> and so um, 
that's how I ended up getting into the business. But uh, what I have memories of wanting to do is be a singer. But because the acting thing took so much time and a lot of precedence, and then you become very ensconced in that, back then it was sort of looked down upon if you try to do two things, like, oh, I'm gonna be an actor and I'm gonna be a singer. So um, I feel really lucky and really blessed that I get to be doing music now, writing and singing. I always wanted to be a musician, I think, uh, in my heart of hearts, but a lot of it is you're scared and you don't want it. You kind of think of it as, as a thing that maybe happened in the past, but for me it didn't happen. I didn't play an instrument, I didn't read music, and then I met a woman who changed my life in many ways, Cara Diaguardi, an incredible songwriter and a producer. And she said to me, well, what kind of things do you want to do? And I said, oh boy, I would give anything if I could write a song like you. And she said, well, what makes you think that you can't? And I said, because I don't play an instrument and I don't read music. And she said, I don't either. Do you have something you want to say? And when she said that, I was like, do I have something I want to say? I have so much that I want to say. And it had almost been like bursting, wanting to get out, and I didn't have an outlet for it. I feel acting in a way is like you have a character and you're playing somebody else, and then you do that performance and you go, and it's out of your hands, and other people, editors take care of it, and you know your performance is formed afterwards in a way. But writing music to me is a really intensely personal connection and I am so thankful for it because, you know, when you're writing a song, you're really writing your, if it's not your own personal experience, it's uh, an idea or a theme that you want to explore with your co-writers, for example, but it is still a personal story that you're telling and I love that. And for me, music is, I, I've always been attracted to the story in songs. So that is what I'm always looking for. Like, is this a good story? Am I going to, you know, be drawn in by what this song is? And even like growing up and hearing songs like Ode to Billy Joe, what was happening up on that bridge? Or She's Leaving Home by the Beatles. Why is she going with that man from the motor trade? Like, don't go, stay, what about your parents? They're gonna miss you. So it was always about the stories that engaged me. So I feel in a way like I'm a storyteller. So my new album is called Halfway to Home. It's really based on sort of the feeling that I always have that we're, in, we're kind of works in progress. We're not really finished. And we are constantly trying to be better. And just when you think you have something figured out, something comes from this side and says, oh, well, I'm gonna give you this new challenge and here's what you can do about that. So um, I feel that sometimes you're kind of one step forward, two steps back, but at the same time, um, I wouldn't have it any other way because if we're lucky enough to be alive, we're lucky enough to be a work in progress. The song The Spark was written um, really about anybody who's in a long-term relationship. And you can define what long-term is for yourself, but I feel that when you get married, what's that thing that happens? You have like a connection with somebody. You have this electrical thing and you have this chemistry and you have a spark and that's what lights the flame. And I think in any long-term relationship, you're gonna have your ups and downs, and sometimes there's gonna be big flames happening and it's all awesome, but sometimes those flames can like get a little dim and there's like little embers and you have to blow on them to get them going up again. But it's kind of about, if you keep that little spark lit, there's always a way to bring back that fire. Throw Me a Party is the single off my album, Halfway to Home. And it was inspired by the fact that um, four years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I'm a survivor. And um, when you first hear those words, you have cancer, it's pretty terrifying. And um, I'm not alone in that, it was scary. And so before you really know that you're gonna be okay and you're dealing with all the bad news, I said to my husband, look, if something happens and I should go before you, I want you to be very sad 
for a very long time. <laughs> but I also want to have a big party. And I described everything that I wanted. I wanted a party and I wanted sparklers and I wanted food and I wanted my friends and I wanted everybody to sing and dance and tell stories and laugh. And um, thankfully that's not gonna happen for uh, the long future. But um, I had the title, throw me, to par throw me a Party. And so I had a little writing camp with a bunch of songwriters and Cara Diaguardi was there. And um, I came to Everybody was broken up into little groups, and uh, the group that wrote Throw Me a Party was Christian Bush and Liz Rose, two incredible songwriters, and me, and we wrote the song about how you want to be remembered. I realize that so many people are having that same experience or have thought about what it is that they want to do when it's their time, and I have gotten the most beautiful comments on um, social media about people who have used the song for memorials, used the song uh, at their funerals, have said, this is the song that I want, because I do think people ultimately want to be celebrated for their lives, and everybody wants to be, you know, remembered and, and missed, but at the end of the day, you want to be remembered for making someone's life a better place. My faith has evolved as I've gotten older because for one thing, it's different. It's it's not the same as when you're younger because the things that you think you want when you're younger are very different. And having um, just been blessed with really an extraordinary life, you almost become more thankful. You can't take credit for it in a way. I, I, I feel like um, everything that I do, anything that good good that is coming out of it, I, I believe, is from um, a higher power. And the older I've gotten, I, I think it's about much more of a, tr a trust and much more of a faith that things are going to be okay. Who, by worrying, could add one hour to their life? And that has given me a lot of peace because you can spiral into the craziest sort of thoughts. And when you let go of that piece of it, it's very helpful. I'm a big believer in prayer. That's the way I start my day. So I don't get out of bed without saying a prayer of gratitude. It's funny because it's like, I, I wonder, it's like, are you getting bored hearing all this? Because it's like, I'm thankful for this and I'm thankful for that. And I just go through my list and I pray for the people that are, you know, struggling or need a, a little bit of extra support and, um, but I really do start my day with a prayer of gratitude. And um, I, I, I'm i saying prayers throughout the day. I think everybody, or not everybody, but a lot of people do that. And um, so for me, it's just a part of my day, really. The first copy of Jesus Calling was a gift to me by my friend Faith Hill. And it was the leather bound one, I still have it. And then I think I told Kristen Chenoweth about it, so she now has it. And it's so funny because sometimes during, now that we have the app, the app is great too, because it's with you everywhere. Um, but now that there's the app, I will send quotes back and forth to my friend. Have you, like, have you read Jesus Calling today? How about this quote? Because there's always, it's like kind of, I don't know, crazy that sometimes you'll read uh, you know, the passage from the day and it's exactly what you need to hear that day. I don't know, that is crazy. And I love on the app that you can mark your favorites and that's very helpful. <laughs> what I love about the book is that it's a uh, devotional. Like there are so many different devotionals, meditative devotionals, um, you know, spiritual devotionals. But for me, what I love about it is that uh, Sarah Young, the writer has basically taken her own sort of meditations on scripture and made them into um, a way that feels very accessible and very um, manageable so that it's it's personal in a way and it makes it feel more connected than just reading scripture. This is from March 23rd. I am a God of both intricate detail and overflowing abundance. When you entrust the details of your life to me, you are surprised by how thoroughly I answer your petitions. 
I take pleasure in hearing your prayers, so feel free to bring me all your requests. The more you pray, the more answers you will receive. Best of all, your faith is strengthened as you see how precisely I respond to your specific prayers. Because I am infinite in all my ways, you need not fear that I will run out of resources. Abundance is at the very heart of who I am. Come to me in joyful expectation of receiving all you need, and sometimes much more. I delight in showering blessings on my beloved children. Come to me with open hands and heart, ready to receive all I have for you. I like the um, psalm that goes along with this too, because it says her in it. I will bless her with abundant provisions. Her poor will I satisfy with food. Thank you, Psalm 13215. I, I think there's a myth that things just happen easily for you. Oh, if you want to do this, you make this happen. If you want that, that happens. But I think anybody who has worked really hard at something knows it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of vision, and it takes a lot of discipline and consistency, right? And for me, I, I think that's one of the things that is the most important is not to give up, to believe that you can do something. I think if you're doing things for the right reasons, if they're really truthfully something you, things that you want to do, it's slightly easier to make it happen. And I do believe that you can set goals and and, and make them happen. But before you do that, you have to know what it is that you want. Earlier, I, I talked a little bit about um, everybody sort of having a gift. And since I've been doing music and I meet people and I sign CDs and I get to talk to people a little bit, I realize and I hear a lot that people say something like, oh, it's so great that you're writing and doing music now. And Oh, I've always wanted to dot, dot, dot. And they always have a thing or a dream that they always wanted to do. And I always say, it's not too late to do that dream. And you don't know where that will lead you. Like, even if it's something like taking a painting class or drawing or sewing or cooking or whatever it is, drama, comedy, there's always a place that you can find to start pursuing that creatively. And I think that that is a really important thing that people know, that they're never just stuck. It's never too late to follow your dreams. And a really, really good friend of mine had this amazing quote when I started writing music. And I said, what, what makes me think that I can be writing music now? He's a very successful singer-songwriter. You've been doing it all your life. And he said, because creativity is time independent. And I was like, okay, yes, there are no rules. Do what you love. You can find Rita's new record, Halfway to Home, on iTunes or wherever music is sold. Stay tuned for our conversation with Pastor Lisa Osteen Comas after this brief message about the Jesus Calling weekly prayer call. Did you know that Sarah Young, the author of Jesus Calling, prays for her readers each day? In that spirit, we want to extend the Jesus Calling prayer community out to you in a more personal way. Each Tuesday morning, you can dial into the Jesus Calling weekly prayer call, where the team from Jesus Calling and special guests will minister to us during a 10-minute call to reflect on that day's passage from Jesus Calling, read scripture references, and pray together for each other and our world. Prayer call times are 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Central, 6 a.m. Mountain, and 5 a.m. Pacific, and are for U.S. only. For more information on the Jesus Calling weekly prayer call or to submit prayer requests, please visit JesusCalling.com slash prayer dash call. Again, to join us in this community of prayer every Tuesday morning, please visit JesusCalling.com slash prayer dash call. As Lisa Osteen Comas grew up learning and loving the Bible in a pastoring family, she never would have predicted God was planning a life of ministry for her, especially after she went through a painful divorce as a young woman. But God used Lisa's love for the Bible and her heart for helping others, and she began teaching classes for those who had been through similar relationship struggles. 
As she started to see healing in her life and in the lives of those she was teaching, Lisa realized God was telling her, you are made for more, a sentiment she shares with others in a book with that very title. My name is Lisa Osteen Comas, and I'm an associate pastor at Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas, where my brother Joel is the pastor. And I've been working at the church for 35 years now. I'm married to Kevin, and we have twin girls and a son. Our son is 17 years old, so we stay very busy between our kids and family and the ministry. My family grew up in a little town outside of Houston called Humble, Texas and uh, my parents had five children together, and we were just normal. We loved God, we loved each other, we fought each other just like all kids do, but our home was really a home of peace and safety and joy, and uh, it was a great childhood. Uh, my parents started Lakewood in 1959, and uh, they just were such great mentors, great parents trained us in the ways of the Lord. And, and you know, we just all look back in our home life and realize what a blessing it was to have what we had as a family. I remember as a teenager that I had this love for reading the Bible, studying the Bible. I would order Bible correspondence courses. You know, I would get books and study them because I just wanted to know more about God. I wanted to know more about His Word. And so uh, I look back now, I didn't know then, but I look back now and I see that, you know, God was preparing me to be a Bible teacher and to be a pastor. And I didn't really realize it. I don't really think I considered anything else. I mean, even though I got a degree in business education, my heart was for ministry. I, I loved how my parents enjoyed ministry. And the one thing I loved about it is I saw that it was fulfilling to them because they were helping people. And I think that was my heart. I want to help people. And I knew how good God had been to me and how He had helped me through so many things in my life. And I wanted to help people too in the ministry. So I, I think I always wanted to work in the ministry. I don't, I don't think I knew where. I worked uh, on the organizational side, just the day-to-day -day, uh, dealings of a church, helping pastor, help organize, work with people. And, um, you know, I began to teach this class of people who had been through divorces, who were separated from their mates, or even still together but struggling in their marriages. God just brought me these people, and I began to teach them every Tuesday night. And so I, I look back, and he was training me to teach the Bible. And I have a best friend of over 30 years. Her name is Deborah. And many years ago, when I went through an unwanted divorce, um, you know, I was down, I was discouraged, but I finally got myself on track and realized that, you know, God uh, still had a plan for my life and I was not disqualified from ministry. And in that time, Deborah and her former husband were married. They were big youth pastors in the state of Texas and just had everything going for them. But her husband left her and she was just so brokenhearted like I had been. And so, two different ministers told Deborah, you need to go to Lisa's classes. Well, she didn't want to because she thought, I don't want to go to a meeting where I have to stand up and say, my name is Deborah, I'm divorced and you know, all that. And, and, but anyway, she really decided she needed to come. And so when she did, I had already known they were, that she was coming. These ministers had told me that they were going to send her. So I began to pray for her before I ever met her. And when she came into the meeting, she stood up and she said, uh, you know, I'm new here because I asked uh, for visitors to stand up. And so I went back and I just said, Deborah, I've been praying for you for weeks. Uh, my friends told me about you. Um, I went through a divorce also, and I could tell you that God's going to get you on the other side. And she was so encouraged that God connected her with someone else who had gone through the very same thing. And she said to me, she said, Lisa, looking at you and your family, I would never think that y'all go through anything. And yet you're telling me you went through all of this. And it just gave her hope. And I asked her, I said, let's go to lunch, you know, because I wanted to encourage her and I pray with her. And lunch went, led to another lunch, another lunch, and then we became best friends. And we are still today, she's in the ministry. And I just felt in my spirit one day, you are made for more because that's what God thinks about you. When he looks at you, 
He says, I made you for more, I made you for greatness. And you know, all these things come against us in life. And sometimes it looks like we're not gonna make it. We're not going to live out our dreams, but with God's help we can. 12 years before I wrote the book, God put it in my heart to just write a book about what he'd done in my life and how I overcame, how he helped me overcome. And so I wrote it and shared my stories, but I also interweaved it with the Word of God, how I overcame that fear, how I overcame an unwanted divorce when I was in my early 20s, just a hard uh, and brokenhearted time in my life. And so I just am very transparent about those those times in my life. And, um, and I just am very practical to help you walk it out with the Word of God. I think the greatest thing that we can do as Christians to follow the will of God is simply follow God every day. I, I tell people all the time, do you want to know the will of God for your life? Do you want to fulfill your destiny? Well, just follow God one day at a time and just get up in the morning and, and say, God, I'm available to you. What do you have for me today? I want to follow you more than I want to do anything else. And that's simply just making yourself available to God. I think another thing is just look at yourself. What has God put in you naturally? What are your giftings? What are your talents that you have? Because whatever He puts in you, He's going to use uh, for your destiny, for His purpose, for His glory. If, if we're in tune with the Holy Spirit, when we do that, then we will recognize God opportunities or people we can touch or minister to uh, are things that we need to be aware of. I absolutely love Jesus Calling. It sits with my Bible. I read it all the time. It so ministers to me, and I think it just reminds me every day that Jesus is with me and that He's listening to me and He's directing my steps, and I don't have to be afraid. It just brings that peace into my life. And I highly recommend this wonderful devotional to anybody because it is a life changer, and I so thank God for Sarah Young in this beautiful devotional. And let me just close by saying this. I think just knowing that God has a plan and a purpose for you is, is key because God created you. He created you on purpose and He created you for purpose. And He put greatness inside each one of us. And I think until we recognize that, that we're not going to really move forward into the direction that He wants us to. And sometimes that means taking labels off of our lives and, and just beginning to believe that I am God's child and He has a plan for me and, and He will help me. If He calls me, He will equip me and help me to do whatever He's called me to do. And so just taking those steps, pursuing God and saying openly to God, God, here I am. I want to do your will. I want to do whatever you call me to do. And He'll get you there. To learn more about Lisa's book, you were made for more, or about her ministry or podcast, please visit lisaosteincomas.com. If you'd like to hear more stories about how God has created us for a purpose, check out our interview with country music artist Ray Lynn. Next time on the Jesus Calling podcast, we talk with viral sensations, the singing contractors. While working on a house one day, Indiana natives Aaron Gray and Josh Arnett decided to take a break and film themselves singing How Great Thou Art. Little did they know their video would garner more than 100 million views and touch hearts around the world. Josh and Aaron share what drives them to sing. I think people was blown away that just a couple ugly guys could belt out some tunes like that. And literally dropping the tool belts where we stood and actually worked. It wasn't a made up place, it was actually the job. Dropping it and saying, let's do this tune, we recorded that thing one time. We had no idea what it would do and uh, still staggering within 32 hours, it had a million views. And, and that, that means a lot, but saying all that to say this, what we like most about it is that people are hearing the message of encouragement and the gospel through a simple song, through a couple of simple guys. Do you love hearing these stories of faith weekly from people like you whose lives have been changed by a closer walk with God? Then be sure to subscribe to the Jesus Calling Stories of Faith podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you like what you're hearing, leave us a review so that we can reach others with these inspirational stories.
And you can also see these interviews on video as part of our original web series, with a new interview premiering every other Sunday on Facebook Live. Find previously broadcast interviews on our YouTube channel on IGTV or on JesusCalling.com slash video.